everybody. I'm Hillary Atkin from the Atkin Report, and I am delighted to welcome Naomi McDougall Jones, producer, writer, and star of the new feature film Bite Me, to this edition of Hillary's Happy Hour. Naomi, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very happy you're here. Your movie, I think, can be described as a vampire rom com with some edgy <laughs> humor. So tell us more about your character, Sarah's story, which also involves an IRS agent and what inspired you to make this movie? Sure. Um, yeah, so I play the lead in the film. I also wrote it and I, um, so Sarah is a badass, blue haired, face tattooed, sporting uh, vampire. She's a real life vampire. Uh, part of the actual real life community of people who identify as vampires. They don't believe they're supernatural. They don't believe they're going to live forever, but they do believe that they need to feed on blood to stay healthy. Um, so Sarah at the beginning of the movie is like living her vampire life, doesn't need anybody, um, is hurting inside, but doesn't show it. And she gets audited by the IRS um, and ends up falling in love with her appearingly square but actually total weirdo IRS agent <laughs> James <laughs> and over the course of the film they sort of unlock in each other uh pieces of themselves that they've never let anybody else see well let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer my name is Sarah Woods I belong to the house of twilight <laughs> we are a collective of independent vampires I'm sorry, what? We're not supernatural, obviously. We have been under investigation by the IRS and we have just received a ruling that we are not a legitimate church. Independent vampires, can you tell me what that is? We need to feed on energy to stay healthy. And how? We drink blood. Ooh. Naomi, you actually made this film a few years ago. So tell us about the challenges of getting distribution and where viewers can find it on platforms, including Apple and Amazon. Sure. Well, we so so we intentionally began our distribution journey with uh, an in-person tour, and this was the summer before COVID when it, this was still possible. So we got very lucky. Um, so in the summer of 2019, we went on what we called the Joyful Vampire Tour of America, which was 51 screenings in 40 cities in 90 days. We moved into an RV for those three months and literally drove 13,001 miles around the country doing these screenings. Um, and it was very much like a circus comes to town affair. We wore costumes. We invited the audience to wear costumes. We had a joyful vampire ball after every screening. <laughs> it, was, it was wild and wonderful and so joyful. Um, and the reason we did that is that um, this is a film very much about community and joy, and it felt wrong to only release it digitally. Um, so we really wanted to have those in-person experiences with audiences um, and, and have a good time. And then we initially had planned to release it digitally right um, after that tour, but then COVID happened <laughs> and the market got really weird for two years. Um, so we, we finally partnered with Under the Milky Way and we're so excited to be releasing it on February 8th um, on iTunes, Apple TV, Amazon, and Google Play. Um, and so folks can watch it there um, in the U.S. or internationally. Well, congratulations on that. You mentioned the number 51 in there, and you also run an investment fund with that number in it. So tell us what that is. Sure. That's funny. Nobody's ever picked up on that coincidence. Before. <laughs> they're, they're, the two numbers are actually unrelated, but uh, women happen to be 51% of the population. Uh, so the 51 fund is a private equity fund to finance films by female filmmakers, um, which I co-founded with Lois Scott, uh, who was the former CFO of the city of Chicago and a couple other women. Um, so that fund is dedicated to um, funding the next generation of female filmmakers, making sh uh, as you may have heard, uh, there are women have been sort of systematically kept out of Hollywood for most of its history um, and to the present day. So financing films by voices we haven't heard from is um, one of the driving passions of my life. Well, you have done several TED Talks about this exact 
subject, the challenges women face in Hollywood, from the dearth of female directors to the insulting nature of many parts available to actresses that you have outlined that you personally saw with your own eyes on casting notices. But what progress have you seen since the Me Too movement and also since the racial reckoning after George Floyd's murder when every Hollywood institution became much more aware of inclusiveness and inequity and systemic discrimination. Please give us some light at the end. Yeah, uh, well, it's sort of, it's, I can only give you some, it's sort of good news, bad news. The good news is that certainly the studios and networks have been running scared, right? Like they understand the, they, they feel the public backlash that has come at them. And they are, they have been eagerly putting out PR (laughs) notices to try and fix it. Um, Where we've seen the most progress is on screen. So you may have noticed in recent years that you have seen more um, people of color in leading roles. You have seen, seen more complex female characters on screen. However, the numbers behind the camera, so in those critical roles of writer, director, producer, cinematographer, editor, the percentages haven't actually changed that much. Um, they've changed a little bit, <laughs> they, but they kind of went up and then they went back down um, as, as public attention started to turn away. So um, the important thing to for audiences to know is that although you are seeing more stories, you are still mostly seeing them through the gaze of white men. So which is why supporting independent film is so important, because that's really where um, an actual plentitude of voices are getting to make their stories. So if you're only looking for content on Netflix, you're probably just supporting the status quo. And it's really important to go on these other platforms like Apple, uh, Apple TV and Amazon and, and, and paying the $2.99 to rent or the $9.99 to buy movies by voices that we don't traditionally hear from. I am. I totally agree with you. But yet I have to remark on this that you were part of one of my favorite all-time television dramas and that is HBO's Boardwalk Empire. So let's take a trip back in time and what was it like to play the role described as screaming secretary? (laughs) Well I I have a great triple scream I can tell you that much. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, Yeah I mean I, I it was amazing. I have I, I have to say, coming off the women in film conversation, I'm one of the only women in that show who didn't have to take her clothes off, which I feel pretty proud about. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a, it was an incredible experience getting to be part of a TV show of that size. Um, it's it's a bit like being inside of this like incredible machine. Like uh, it, it's hard to describe. Like you're just sort of this little cog moving around, and then the PA comes and gets you, and you go to set, and then you come. Um, but it was such a privilege and so cool to get to see that in action and to be part of that huge cultural moment. Yeah, it was it was just brilliantly written. I just adored that show. And I also think our audience will love seeing you in Bite Me, which is such a fun romp with, you know, great costumes and cinematography and, you know, a fun message behind it. So as we wrap up our happy hour, Naomi, I want to propose a toast to you and the success of Bite Me. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. Cheers to you. Cheers.